Welcome to Terry TV. How are you? I know I've been away for a week and I'm late on top of it, but that's my Monday. And um, all I can say is uh, I made it. Yay. That's kind of the way I'm feeling right now. Thank goodness I made it. How are you all today? I hope you're doing well. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. And thank you. Thank you for being patient and uh, allowing me my week last week. Last week was a lot of family stuff for me. I'm the adult in the room. I'm not used to being the adult in the room. I'm an artist and a creative person, and I would much rather be doing that than math or anything that requires uh, administrative work, truth be told. Anything that requires filling out of forms and paperwork and all that, I would rather not be doing. Uh, but I have to, and I recently have to do it for several households because um, my father has passed and, uh, oh, that sounds like a good idea. My father has passed and uh, I'm, um, I'm at a loss. I haven't been able to do my art. And so last year, uh, last year, last week, when I asked you all and told you there would not be a broadcast, it's because it was a very challenging week for me. If you have found that this is the year that it's challenging for you because you make your plans on a Sunday or Monday for how the week might be mapped out, or maybe you just figure out your day and then all of a sudden a comet streaks across your day and all you can do is grab on and blah, that's been my year. And many of you know uh, that part of it is the loss of my father and other fun things. And I'm sure you have a bit of a catalog of things that came across your bow, uh, something with your apartment, your home, your work, your life that you just weren't prepared for. And just know that my heart goes out to you and I get it. We are kindred spirits here. And that is indeed... Um, what's been happening. Today, I wanted to share with you right off the bat all and continue to share with you um, just a few things. First of all, happy Hanukkah. And uh, if you were able to make Hanukkah work <laughs> when it was so close to Thanksgiving and on the tribe today, they were talking about one time when Hanukkah actually started on Thanksgiving. I just can't imagine it. I am having challenges with getting prepared for Christmas because it was so close to Thanksgiving. And right in the middle of that, uh, I laid my father to rest at the LA National Cemetery. So uh, a lot, a whirlwind of stuff. In fact, over the weekend, because of very dear friends, and you, you, you really do keep your friends close when you're going through some of these dramatic challenges, don't you? Don't push them away. Don't, don't be on your own, but invite ones to come and just kind of help you to stay afloat at a time when you feel you might sink. And that's what I'm going to, my advice for you today is here at Terry TV. My name is Terry Harden and I am Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer. And 99.9% .9 of the time I have upbeat stuff to talk to you about. But during the holidays, it can be a melancholy time for people. And I want you to know that if that is the case for you, find someone or a group of people or a place or a thing that brings you joy so you can help yourself not stay so dark. And uh, I speak from experience because um, last week was the week that I uh, took my dad's ashes and uh, we placed them at the L.A. Memorial Cemetery in Los Angeles, obviously LA, that's what it means. Uh, and that is a, a VA. My dad was army and uh, it was a wonderful place to put him because now he's with his fellow veterans and also family can go and visit him should they wish to do so. My dad was a man of not wanting to make things difficult for people. So this was great. It was short, it was sweet, and it was lovely. The off side, I'll say, is that it was the same day President Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were going to be visiting the cemetery to give a speech, to lay a wreath, et cetera, et cetera, because it was 
uh, right there on the day or near the day of the Veterans Day, December um, recognition day. And uh, yeah, so uh, our uh, cemetery um, administrator who helped us and was my light in the darkness as I did something for the first time, I have never done this before, which was to make arrangements for my father's ashes, to make sure I had all the paperwork because yes, during this time of sadness or this time of melancholy, if you would rather use that word, uh, you still have to do paperwork, uh, i.e. adult in the room. When you're an artist and you'd rather not be that adult in the room, you'd rather be creating. Um, I had to deal with all of that, but it went smoothly. We were just told that, thank goodness, we were in early service because if we had been a later one, it was going to collide head on into the motorcade, the ultimate security and all of the stuff that surrounds the president of the United States and the vice president of the United States. So, oh boy. Yeah, that was, we got in and we, you know, it was simple and luckily things went well, but it was a little bit of a, of an e-ticket. It wasn't a challenge, but it was a little, you know, of an e-ticket when it happened. In any case, I slept through most of the weekend and I'm back today. And that's why if I look a little bright eyed and bushy tailed, it's because I am, I am. Uh, my mother-in-law gave us a lovely gift that seems to be made out of the same fiber material as my dog's calm bed. You might've seen these like fluffy donuts that a dog kind of buries themselves in and all the little all the little hair, the, all the little fibers kind of touch your dog and massage your dog when they're rolling around in their little donut bed. Well, this is a, a, a throw that's made of that super soft and made of that fabric. And the dog just owns it now. She rolls and buries herself and burrows under it. And it was just completely entertaining over the weekend to watch her have a good time. But also, before I forget, now that I have a few of you here, I wanted to talk to you about this piece. This is a Seventh Voyage of Sinbad Cyclops. And for those of you who love Ray Harryhausen, I'm going to open this up. This is done by a Japanese company called X Plus, who got X at the time. This is a um, this is a a limited edition, and it is a 1958. It's from 19 it's not done in 58 it is reminiscent of 1958 okay it's 12 inches tall and it has a deluxe base and it's accurate in detail this is because when you get a company like x plus which is from um which is from uh um japan you get beautiful uh, beautiful, beautiful items. And I will show you on this side, there are some characters. So I own this guy. This is uh, Talos from Jason and the Argonauts. And then there's some other characters here, which I don't have. And then I don't have this guy. Now, what is the deal with this guy? Well, this guy, I did not sculpt. It is a Japanese company that sculpted this piece. It's 12 inches tall and it's limited edition. I cannot tell you how many. And it came from a friend of mine, and the box is average condition, so it's not mint condition, but he's taken that into account as I open it and unbox it for you here as we are talking, right? And what my friend wanted you to know is that he would like very much, if any of you would like to have this guy, he's very heavy. Can you hear that? So you can see that it's cast in a very nice material. I'm going to be very careful. But here he is. And look at his like facial features as we zoom in. I'm going to grab the camera and kind of like pick it up and like do a little um, zoom in of him. See, turning his face towards you. See how lovely he is. And look at the detail in his hands. As we come closer to the hands, see that hand and the claw and the detail in the chest and over here and then his legs and then the base. There's the base. Let's do it that way. There we go. See his hooves. Everything really beautiful. I'm going to put my camera back now so that you don't get all woozy. 
but he is 12 inches tall. To me, he looks taller, but I'm sure he's 12 inches tall, delicate to earn up here. If this is something that you would like to have, my friend is only asking $250 for it. So um, he got it at a convention and um, he, it's beautifully, there are no chips. The white you're seeing is that fluff. So don't let that worry you. It's it's fluff. It's not chipped or anything. But if you're interested in it, you can let me know in the comments or you can reach out to me um, at my email, which is terry at terryharden, H-A-R-D-I-N.com. And, uh, or you can message me on Instagram or something if you're interested in having him. Uh, my friend would love it to go to a good home. So you see how I dusted that off so no chips or anything. Very good detail, fur, sculpting, chest detail, face detail, teeth, horn, ears. Everything is beautiful. And uh, I promised my friend today that I would uh, offer it to you guys if you want him. You know, I know, I mean, this is a channel where anything and everything can happen, right? And he's placed in beautiful foam. So you see he's got this foam. And he just climbs, he just climbs into his box. I'm going to gently set him in here. There you go. So there's the back half, how he sits in his box. See, he's telling you, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. And I'm specially packed. And the eye is really cool, too. The eye is really beautiful. Anyway, if this is something that you'd like to have in your collection, and we're just carefully, we're not forcing anything here, but you can see that it goes together just beautifully. See? See, 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 see. Now I can tape it up again, but I don't really want to do that in case you write to me and you have questions so that I can check it out. So if it's something that looks good to you, then great. Just know that this company, see, it shows you on the back all of the cool stuff, the hoof, the hand, the teeth, and the face feature. Seventh Voyage of Sinbad is something you like. You can see there's a little bit of tape on the box. Um, and you can see here, Ray Harryhausen, X plus, and the address is Japan. See, Osaka. See, see, I'm I'm on the level about this, guys. Um, but it is a very, it's, it's a bit of a rare piece because it was done years ago. I mean, I went to Japan in... I want to say 20, goodness, 2000 and something. I did a 2007, 2007. Yeah, that's when I went and got my um, Talos from Jason. So they're not um, easily found and uh, not easily acquired. And I haven't looked on eBay to say, to see what they sell for. But my friend said 250 is what he wants. So rather than look it up, you're welcome to look it up. But I think 250 is a steal, actually. So um, actually, I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it the other way. So let me just do this proper out of the good thought of in my I'm I'm really I'm kind of particular about stuff like this. I want to make sure that they are sitting in the box proper and not resting on areas, even though it's so beautifully, um, you know, foamed. There are times I often wish when I have sculptures that I could foam it that well. Just give me a minute. There we go. I just want to double check. Okay, that was correct. That was right. Okay, that was the right way for it to go in. I just wanted to double check. Because honestly, you don't want the poor fella to be sitting on his head. You know, when you set the box and you do the picture so it's upright, you want to make sure he's sitting 
on his base. So that's what I did. But if you have any questions about that, any interest about that, give me a shout. I promised I would talk about it on um, my page today from a friend. Um, he thought the holidays, it might be just the ticket for some, for that gift that you don't know what to get somebody. Um, though, you know, I don't know how available that is. So uh, I was going to point that out and mention that to you. So hi, everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I love Ray Harryhausen. I have a couple of books signed by Ray. I met Ray uh, before he passed away. It was definitely some fun and festive conversation. And uh, we talked a lot about his animation, his stop motion animation. And I'm a huge fan of stop motion animation. Huge fan. You may have um, you may be long enough with me here at the channel to know that we talked about uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, which debuted, which debuted last last year, and uh, was up for Academy Awards last year, which it won, and uh, I was over the moon for it. So that's exactly. Um, one of the reasons that the Harryhausen stuff really thrills me. And Ray was so cute when we talked to him because, of course, he talks about the skeleton sequence. If you, if you, Jason the Argonauts is my favorite, and I think a favorite of many of you who like Harryhausen stuff. Um, he talks about animating the skeletons in that and also the, the multi headed hydra that uh, comes out to attack Jason to protect the Golden Fleece. And how back in the day, you used these um, gauges that are on stands and the gauge would touch uh, the puppet, the stop motion puppet in the position, right? So like if my, if my um, finger was, let's put it in an area here, let's put it here. If my finger was the Hydra, you would put the, the point of this gauge here and then you would move the Hydra a little bit and then you take pictures and then you'd adjust the gauge to that. And then you'd move the Hydra again and take pictures. And then maybe you'd move the Hydra a little bit more and take pictures. But each time you would move this gauge to give you an indication of where you had been. Because back in Harryhausen's day, we didn't have things like the lunchbox, which is a, a unit that would allow you to go forward and backward with, it was a recording device. I still have the lunchbox actually, but I don't know if I could actually use it anymore because the software is no longer supported. Nowadays, you can put a program on your iPad and use onion skin, can't you? Onion skin meaning a see-through material that allows you to see your puppet below it. It's transparent. And then as you move it, you get to see the ghost of where it was and then where you are, and then another onion skin is here, and then it shows you the ghost of here and then here, and then you can run it back and forth to see if it flows right in stop motion. So it's really cool, and it's a, a thing you can put on your iPad or tablet. Absolutely mind-blowing how, how revolutionary stop motion has become. Now, that doesn't mean that it takes any less time it takes the same it takes many it takes time it takes uh, uh patience and um it's still you know you're still doing the layers and you still but they've given you um they've given you uh a technology that helps it be a lot simpler than the day of very house he used to say it was so frustrating as he would do this uh you know gauge uh head and then the phone would ring and he would go and answer the phone and then go, is this the past uh, one? Do I need to move the gauge here? And do I need to move this or do I need to move the gauge? You know, trying because he went and answered the phone. So he would keep journals of where he was too. But that was so frustrating. And then you had to develop film and if you don't know what film is, please Google it. Uh, but you had to develop the film and then watch what they call dailies in order to see how the character moved. Did the character move what you want or did it and then move or did it move too fast, you know, you know, and not the speed that you wanted it to be. And all of this meant you had to put, have the film in camera 
advance it frame by frame at a rate that you choose. And then you had to develop it. Then you had to put it in a projector and then you had to roll it, watch it and decide if it worked. If it didn't work, you scrapped it. No good. And you went back to square one, which is what Ray Harryhausen always said was that you guys got it easy was what he would always say. Not like my day. And so if you haven't had the golden opportunity to see uh, Jason and the Argonauts, Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, Golden Voyage of Sinbad, or some of these films that Ray worked on, it's worth it to see it because it was all that. Dit, 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 dit. Like in the original 1933 King Kong. In fact, if you have a DVD of it, which we do, um, if you have a DVD of King Kong, you can actually slow it down on your machine and catch a couple of these gauges I'm talking about. Um, because that's how they did the terror. That's how they, they did. They animated King Kong was to use this gauge technique that I've just talked about. And if you freeze it, you can see the gauge and at, not all the time because they take the gauge out, click, 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 bring the gauge in, which is even more annoying, right? Because, you know, you've got, you know, hand moving this way. Then you put the gauge in. Okay. That looks good. Slide it out. Try to keep it level move the hand, come back in, put the gauge, adjust the gauge. Okay. That's good. Slide it out. Come back. I mean, can you imagine we are so fortunate to do stop motion today because we have that wonderful onion skin. It's as good to the stop motion animators as, um, layers was to Photoshop. Photoshop, if you're familiar with using Photoshop and you are as familiar with it as I was, Photoshop 3 was when they introduced layers. Before that, Photoshop did not have layers. And when they introduced layers, I remember crying. I remember absolutely weeping. And at that time, you could only have three layers. Now you can have, you know, 10, 15 layers in Photoshop and in various illustration digital programs. But at the time it was three, but I remember it was so liberating. It is, it's as though I had our hands holding my, my little wings together. And the minute layers happened, I could fly. <laughs> uh, it was just such a beautiful experience. And if you don't do stop motion or you draw, or you don't draw, um, this is just, just think of something that in your line of work was so difficult to do. And then someone came up with something that just knocked the shackles off your arms and legs. And you felt like, oh my gosh, oh, I feel so good. You know, that, uh, that is what Ray spoke about with stop motion animation. And I will tell you, he did get to cross over into the day of the lunchbox where he absolutely was very impressed by the lunchbox, even though he said that we had no such tools at this time. And you guys are very lucky. And now if he had been able to see the iPad and how lucky we are now, he would have just said, wow, what I could do with something like that. So, uh, and, and of course, if you looked at Pinocchio by Guillermo del Toro and looked at the behind the scenes or were fortunate enough to go to MoMA uh, or see uh, the actual set pieces and some of the cameras they used and some of the techniques they used and the, the, the gauges, they still had to keep a strong, um, list of what was happening because when you're doing a movie like that it's not linear meaning it's not like let's start with pinocchio and then deep 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 what they do is have several little booths that are usually divided by dubatine curtains and in each booth there's a set piece and each animator is animating a different scene that will then be cut together so they have to be cohesive and uh, it's still a lot of detail work. And as Guillermo points out, it wasn't all done in one place. Some of the sequences were done in Mexico. Some of the sequences were done up north at uh, uh, at uh, Laika. Some, some, you know, any, he said that at one point in Portland, everybody who was a stop motion animator was working on his film. And that, 
if someone had dropped, he makes a joke about it. If someone had dropped a explosive device, they would have, and it blew up in Portland, it would have knocked out 75% of the stop motion animators at one time. Let's not hope that this ever happens, but a chilling thought, meaning there were tons and tons and tons of stop motion animators of every level from journey, from beginner to journeyman to professional that he recruited both here in Southern California, Portland and Mexico and, er you know, everywhere was working. So you're not only not in the same place, you're not in the same state and in many cases, not in the same country. So imagine trying to coordinate all of that. So going to the MoMA exhibit was very enlightening on how much detail and how they kept it together to make this beautiful film that ended up winning an Academy Award. And it really is a beautiful film if you haven't seen it. Uh, be sure to see it. At, and what I would suggest is you purchase a DVD or Blu-ray of it because the behind the scenes are very, very exquisite and they help you to understand the thought processes and understand what it really takes to do it. In fact, Guillermo said at an interview, um, um, I think I've mentioned that we're friends and uh, I would have loved to sit with him and had a conversation, but he's been a very busy man. So I kind of reach out to him occasionally via various ways. And, um, and, uh, he mentioned that it can take seven days to do one and a half seconds of footage. So just think about that and you know what it took to do a stop motion film. So I want to create stop motion, but as I've said to my husband, I want to experience it. I've always wanted to do it, but I'm not looking to do a two hour film or a one hour film or th something so massive. What I'd like to do is just do little vignettes, which will still take time, won't they? Because if you're looking for a minute, let's say I'd like to do something five minutes long, you're easily talking a few months and we're not even talking building, construction, all of that. And he's talking about having people all over the, all over the world in some cases um, and all over the country in some cases doing his film. So uh, I won't be doing anything that massive. It'll probably be just myself and my husband in a room doing it together as a labor of love. So it won't be anything huge. And we're going to start out with the basic movements. We're just going to do studies. And we hope that when we get into this, that we can share it with you. So you can kind of see the building blocks of stop motion film. I'm sure you can see it on other YouTube channels. You just won't see it through my eyes. And I really feel strongly about seeing something through everybody's eyes. So if you're out there and you're thinking to yourself, you know, so this Harry, Harryhausen, you could listen to Ray Harryhausen and realize that you're lucky today doing stop motion film. Uh, and it's going to take a long time still, blah, blah, blah. And you could just say, I'm giving up. But if you watch the inspiration from Harryhausen, you watch the inspiration from uh, uh, Rankin Bass, which is your Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, your Santa Claus is coming to town, your little drummer boy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, or a movie that brings both together animation, which Rankin Bass actually does. Mad Monster Party, excuse me. How could I forget Mad Monster Party? Uh, and it will do animation like this year. There's a movie called um, The Inventor. It mixes stop motion with 2D animation. And you can kind of see some of the things that people have chosen to do. They are doing films. But for someone like us, my husband and I, we want to do studies so that we can learn more on how things move because we've never done this before. I'm a sculptor and an illustrator and a painter. So I'm doing still stuff, aren't I? Painting the scene, doing the sculpture. What, oh, you know, <laughs> don't need to get it from here to here. I just sculpt it in the position. That looks great, don't I? So, um, and there's, you know, perspective with the sculpture. I'm not saying sculpture is uh, simple by all means. It is not. And I've practiced it for over 30 years, wanting it to be dynamic, you know, rather than this. I like this, 
You see, I really love to push the envelope in my sculptures and I'm working on it in my paintings, my paintings. I didn't start painting until 2020 during the pandemic. So I have a long way to go, but I love the journey. And I'm just saying that that's why my husband and I have decided to do studies first. Um, you know, little, little vignettes that might only be seconds in length so that we can practice and practice and practice. And when we nail it, we go, ooh, and then we'll try something with it. I remember years ago, I used to do stop motion with a film camera where you would take things like a perfume bottle or uh, an armature of some sort, and you would just play with it and film it and see what you came up with, like a perfume bottle or a box, like this box. You can make this box like walk, and you'd shoot it single frame, you know. What could you do to make it, you know, look like it was moving or would you do this access? Would you do this access? Would you, you know, is it a sad box? Maybe it's slower. Maybe it's, you know, does it look up? Does it look over? Does it look over like this? Hey, what's that sound? Or does it go, hey, What's that sound? You see like a rock. So you see these studies are fun to do in stop motion anyway. And that's kind of what we did with a perfume bottle. Was it an excited perfume bottle? Did it have something to tell you? And it would go, you know, or was it kind of shy? You see what I mean? So what makes the, and what does this? And what frames do you shoot? You know, how long, if it's standing, do you do you rest on it? Click, 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 click. You see what I mean? So all of these are questions when you start to do stop motion animation that could be fun to analyze and do as the team of Terry and Lindsay. So that's what I'm excited to do next year. It's, it's, it's revving me up. Also, uh, I'm looking forward to when I'm not the adult in the room, I'm going to have to be the adult in the room for a few things. But right now I'm the adult in the room for several households. And uh, I'd like to bring that number down and it will come down as I check off things on the list. But that's kind of the thing that you've got to kind of breathe about because if I don't think about it as an artist, if you don't get to create as an artist, there's a portion of you that is not being fed. And for me, I haven't been able to feed the creative side of me. So it's very exciting to talk to you today about stop motion and our Cyclops because uh, Harryhausen helps me to remember what I planned for the new year. December is a time when I usually sit down and say, okay, what happened in the year of 2023? How, what did I love about it? What did I not like about it? What goals did I achieve or attain? What goals did I not hit? And this year a comet went through it and there's so many that got toppled over. You know, I felt kind of lost like the island of misfit toys if you will and that was because there were family manners that took my priority and there was no way they weren't going to so i'm not upset about it i just have to realize that this was a year that i was i was kind of a broken bird because i didn't get to create at the rate that i like to create so i am hopeful for next year that we all stay healthy please and that we all stay happy. Now we can't be all the time happy, but happy, healthy, uh, and well, right? That's my prayer. And uh, I'm looking forward to that next year and a chance to get back to my art table and continue to create. Because usually I will create a couple of sculptures a year. And I maybe have mentioned to you that I want to do the Rolly Crump chess set. And I was really rolling on that. Rolling on Rolly Crump chess set. Oh, that's a cute little turn of phrases, isn't it? But I had to slow down because uh, my my dad wasn't well. And then when he passed, sometimes the desire to create art isn't enough when you're feeling kind of, when you're feeling melancholy. And uh, as much as you want to create art and you sit down and say, 
now I'm going to do something. Now I'm going to paint or now I'm going to sculpt or now I'm going to work on a project that I have promised to somebody. And you just can't make your hands or brain uh, work together. This is the challenges that uh, you're going to have as an artist. I did have one artist ask me if after the passing of my dad, that when I did try to paint, did he influence the art? He hasn't yet. But last night I had a dream about him and it was so bizarre. That's no other word for it. Because first of all, it was a dream where he was still alive and it was very quick. I mean, in the dream time, dream time, time is relative, but it was very quick. And I woke up very quickly. And I remember sitting up straight up in bed and looking around and wondering what had just happened. I'm still thinking about it in the back of my mind. Um, but it was so jarring that it happened so quickly after, um, you know, taking his ashes and taking them to the LA cemetery that, uh, I was, I was, I was uh, surprised and I got up because I was awake. I mean, it just woke me up and uh, uh, it may have been him because on the tribe. And while I'm thinking about it, guys, and telling you about stop motion animation, because I'm talking Ray Harryhausen, right? So I wanted you to do that. And I haven't even touched Godzilla yet, but I promise I will. I, pro I promise I will. Godzilla is another thing that I'm just gaga over. I know that many of you think that I'm Disney centric because of my Imagineering, but I am reptile crazy. So dragon, I have dra love of dragons. This is why I designed, I was so passionate about designing the dragon at uh, Disneyland Paris, which you can see is a 30, uh, 35 foot dragon that roars and breathes fire and is, is amazing. And, um, I created that whole attract, that whole attraction. That's not really an attraction. It was me. Yeah. As an Imagineer, it was very fun, very cool. And I never done it before. I love dragons. I'm dragon nuts. So is it a wonder that I also love Godzilla? I mean, you segue in to the Godzilla and that's the cool part. Well, this Harryhausen, this is why I thought I'd talk today because my friend has this beautiful sculpture that if you want it, it's $250. It's really a good, good price. If it were 10 inches tall, it would be $25 an inch and it's 12 inches tall. So you get a couple of bonus inches if that's the way you want to think about it. But reach out to me if you think it's the great gift because I think so. It's very, very beautiful. Japan really does this stuff up beyond um, exquisite. Uh, my sculpture as a sculptor got better when I sat with a lot of the people from Japan and uh, just watched them work and spoke with some of them and shared. Artist to artist, you can't beat it. You really can't. So uh, not being able to be in my studio is a little challenging. And uh, I will, I do want to get back there, but I also have to be Okay, there comes a time when you have to be the adult in the room, and my time is now. So, um, so yes. So on the page today, we talked about on Patreon. And before I forget, let me invite you guys to come and be a part of Terry's Tribe on Patreon. Here is where you go, and it's only five dollars a month. Um, get on it guys. It is so much fun. And the holidays are one of the most fun. We're right now doing our planning stages. What worked, what needs to, what would you like to see on this page? What can more can we do? Things like that. We starting to talk about them. Um, and it's really cool. It's really cool for $5 a month. You get two broadcasts. I do Mondays and Fridays before this one. And then I also do a Zoom, a live Zoom call once a week. Last week, of course, I did it, but they are such beautiful people. And it's really joining, not because of me. I could be the catalyst that gets you started, right? But the other people in the tribe are what makes this community so very special at just $5 a month. I mean, put a jar by your door and throw a quarter in it or change in it. And you're going to have it every month. I keep it that way because your voice needs to be heard. So I encourage you to check it out. Go here, look at it. You want to join for a high level. That's up to you. 
But uh, you can always start out at the $5 and check it out and see it's something that you want. Right now, there's more that my husband and I, my husband, Lindsay, and I want to do for the patrons and for the tribe. But this was one of those crazy years. So uh, we're talking about it now, December, the, the month of vision. But we're still holding on to the tail of the comet. So we're trying to see the vision while we're still <laughs> hanging on to the comet because it does not want to give up until uh, December 31st, does it? So uh, hang on. We're almost there. And uh, join here if you're so inclined. We'd love to have you. Okay? All right. So I think... That's a lot of what I wanted to tell you today. I may come up with 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 something else. I may come up with something else in my head uh, while I'm chatting with you. But uh, the holidays are coming. If you want to share with me, my husband is gonna put some lights up today. We're gonna put some lights up because right now our home looks like Scrooge McDuck lives there. <laughs> uh, again, comment. <laughs> My neighborhood looks so pretty. It's time for me to get in on it. And my husband and I are like, how far does one want to go? And I would like to at least put lights up and say, hey, I am feeling festive. I'm just, uh, yeah, got stuff, don't we? Sometimes we got stuff and we got to just kind of breathe and chill. And over the weekend, I slept and read a great book I'm happy to share with you. This one right here. This is George. Um, a magpie memoir. I always love to read memoirs because I'm looking to write my own. And um, this one is very special. It's written by Frida Hughes. She's a an artist and a poet, and uh, which is also art, by the way. But uh, she has two very well-known parents who are also artists. And uh, she had a lot of comets streak through her life. And uh, she talks about um, how this magpie... Uh, changed her, helped her to grow. And uh, she's a lot like, I'm noticing she's a lot like me. She talks about how no matter how hard you scrub, your fingernails are always dirty. That's kind of something with me. I try really hard. I cut them short because I can't seem to keep them clean. Now, of course, you could always do French tip, which gives you the illusion that they're clean. But I, I don't, I'm like a five-year-old. I don't sit still well. And um and uh, uh, so to just try and do that. But as I look at my nails now, I can see that they're so. Anyway, a great little book. I'll hold it up one more time. It's an easy read. It's a good read. And if you are a creative person, I think you will really enjoy it. It's uh, she went through some real comets streaking across her life at various ages. And she talks about some of the things that make her feel grounded and successful. And it's really beautifully written and well done. And uh, I read this this weekend in between naps. I had a lot of naps this weekend after the stress was lifted from the week before. And uh, this book is very helpful. So I highly recommend it. It's a great little book. And there's her name right there. See, Frida Hughes and George. So not too expensive, but definitely worth the purchase and very, you know, I'm, I can't sit and as much as I'd love to sit and read a book cover to cover. And those of you who have that luxury, this is something that feels successful to me is to be able to take a day, pull up a book and read it. I will say that the time I had COVID and I had to isolate from my husband, I read five books cover to cover. It was the luxurious side of being sick. Um, I just, it was definitely one of those times when the, one of the good things for me uh, that helped me get through COVID was just reading book after book after book. And you may have heard me say about films, we were just about to talk about Godzilla here, but before I do, as I hold her book up for a long time so that you guys can write it down or freeze the frame if you're seeing this and welcome if you're first timers, forgive me, it's been a week since I've been away. So I'm back now and let me welcome you and encourage you to subscribe if you so wish to. This is not a channel where it's the same every week. It is a peek into my brain called Terry TV, where I talk about all kinds of stuff. And today, which is rare, I'm not talking a lot of Disney. 
<laughs> some Disney, but not a lot. Um, because I thought it would be neat to talk film as we are whisking our way towards awards and films that are going to be uh, nominated and acknowledged for their good work. And I can't wait to see what those are. Um, super big fan of a lot of them. But anyway, this this book, very calming, very sweet. And um, a lot of times I don't read, I, I mean, a, I tend to read things like this. I don't read a lot of fiction. Um, but sometimes I will, but I don't read a lot of fiction. I like to read um, nonfiction and about people and animals. What she talks about in here, uh, not only about George, the uh, wonderful magpie, but birds. And she um, talks to you about personalities and the different, because she spends a lot of time in, in nature, Frida does. And it's been wonderful because as I paint, I'm trying to find my stride as a painter. I've only been a couple years painting, so I don't expect it to happen overnight. And I haven't been able to do it in a while, so I'm really missing it. But um, what would I like to paint? How would I like to move forward? What subjects interest me? Would I do fantasy from my head or would I just kind of do studies or what is it I would like to do? And um, it's been lovely to hear about some of the uh, things that she has learned as she uh, writes in her memoir. So it's really, it's really wonderful. It's probably one of the best ones I've ever read because it, it's so much like me. There's a lot of things that are like me. And then there are things that aren't like me. Like she loves to garden and I'm not a gardener. I don't like gardening. Um, but I'm not a, it doesn't, it doesn't speak to me. I love people who garden because I think it's amazing, but it's not the thing that speaks to me. So it's one thing that we don't share, but what we do share is a lot of the time management and st stuff like, it's just a great, it's a great, great book. So reading it from cover to cover is a luxury that I consider success. People say, hey, how do you, what makes you feel successful? Being able to sit for a day and read a book cover to cover for me would feel very successful. And I love reading. My husband got me several books that I've cracked the cover of, but haven't been able to finish them because I'm reading them in the cracks of my life. And then of course, 2023 was one big tear. <laughs> So <laughs> not a lot done, but when I, but as I started to say, movies are movies. And so when people get upset because they're not necessarily accurate, you've got to remember it's a movie and a person or director or group of people who are going to do a movie need to tell it the way they think will make it compelling. And then if you look at it and you say, well, that's not the way it happened or it didn't happen that way, hopefully it will inspire you to then go read the book. Okay. Because the book is where you're going to find the actual account of how things happened, especially if it's a nonfiction book. So several books that I love, uh, loved reading, loved learning about were uh, uh, Hacksaw Ridge, which is one of my favorite movies. And then the interviews with that gentleman, he has since passed. But when you read the book, you see where the filmmaker chose the pearls to tell in the movie. And I think in the hope of, of inspiring you to go and read the book and learn the full story, because you, you know, a book is a book. And unless you're going to do an eight hour series, sometimes that's not enough to tell the whole story. So in a movie that's two hours, it's just enough to get your whistle and then go read about it. Okay. If you want the actual account, told correctly, that should be a documentary, right? Or a documentary series, but documentary, not movie. Movie is art and you can do it how you want to do it. Shift things around, move things around. So they're more interesting and really uh, ignite your joy of the movie. And then you can say, well, that didn't really happen in that order, or that didn't really happen in that way, or that's a complete untruth then you can go and read about it to find the truth. You follow me? So that's always what I say to people is you got to cut the movie uh, some slack. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, which talks about the lead singer of Queen, which is a, a band that is just, I, I defy you to play their music and not move. It's so wonderful. Definitely fabulous dance music. But the lead uh, the lead singer 
who was amazing and creative and wonderful and challenged, as we all are, uh, they shifted some of his timeline because it made the movie have more impact in the thought of the people making it. Then you can go back and read about Queen, their history, and this wonderful person's history, and then you can see how it actually happened. You follow me? If you ever see a movie, I think it's called, trying to remember the name of it, but I read the book because it's about an interracial couple who at the time were arrested for being together and marrying, I think, actually, but I don't think they were married. I think they were arrested and put in prison because it was illegal in their location for a white person to be married to a black person. And I am the product of a white mother and a black father. So of course I wanted to read this book right away. And then they did a movie and they kept the movie true to the book and it was boring. It was so boring. It was face sliding off your skull, boring because it just needed more impact, more energy, more sparks, because it was a movie. And then you go back to the book and you read the book and go, ah, that's how it happened. Ah, that's how it happened. You follow me? Okay. Enough of that. Enough of all of that. Let's see what you guys are up to. I know I chattered away because I missed you guys, honestly. So, um, you know, so there you go. But uh, happy holidays, everyone. Yes, and you got the idea now. If you're new, you're catching this after the live, you can see it goes zing, 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 especially this year. <laughs> especially this year. Uh, Michael Morris is a Muppet Family Christmas 30th anniversary. It's true. And if you haven't seen Family Christmas, or you should see, as many people in Terry's Tribe say, uh, it isn't Christmas without a Muppet Christmas Carol. So that might be something else. Um, I've been a Muppeteer for a long time. I think my first show with Muppets was 1988 or nine when Jim Henson came and handpicked me and uh, I got to do some work with him before he passed. So yeah, in the 82 is when I met him. Um, and then in the eighties is, is so, you know, you guys do the math. I'm enough adult in the room to worry about the math right now. Uh, but you can do it, Michael. Um, Diane, hi. Diane Sebo is watching and your name is there, Diane. So you don't even have to say because your name is there now. Hi, how are you? Joe, how are you? Unfortunately, I'm still sick as a dog and won't be sticking around today. Back to sleep. Oh, Joe, I hope you get better. Get better soon. Feel better soon. Get well soon, Joe. Um, we love you, man. We love you. Thank you for popping in and saying hello even when you're sick. Soup, chicken soup, yeah? If, as long as you're not vegetarian, if you're vegetarian or vegan, chicken soup may not work, but it's always makes you feel better. Doesn't it? Chicken soup when you're sick, you don't feel like eating. So you eat chicken soup. Anyway, that's what I like. Chicken soup. It's gotta be Campbell's chicken soup though. You know, in the red can. Yeah. Because I had it as a kid. Um, so yeah. So feel better, Joe. And Diane says, get well soon. This is the be beautiful thing about that. Uh, you tell Dave goals. no. I had life. So, um, no, I did not. Good morning, Terry and Terry's fans wishing you all a very Merry Christmas and a happy holiday. Right? Right. Thank you, Bob. You always come through. Janet, Joyce, how are you, girl? Everyone wishing all of you a Merry Christmas. It's coming, isn't it? Like a freight train. <laughs> I'm like, Today is the 11th, and all of a sudden I realized that next Monday is the 18th, and I was like the kid from Home Alone. Oh, Macaulay. And by the way, uh, all my heart goes out to Macaulay as he is battling cancer, and he had a long surgery, and we hope that they got it all and that he will lead a, a cancer survivor healthy life. So uh, heart goes out to you, Macaulay. I watched Home Alone and thought of you and wished you positive prayers and wishes. Um, a great movie if you want to watch that as well. Bob Berdeen, it's no fun, but sending our best and positive thoughts. Indeed, indeed. And thank you, Bob. You always do. That's what calls, that's uh, what makes you a blessing. Um, glad you're doing better, Terry. Love you. Yes, Janet. Uh, I got through the week 
which was the week I was away. I was concerned, which is why I did not broadcast. There are times you need to just step away from broadcasting because uh, you don't want to present a it's just better if you don't, you know, you just don't know what's going to set you off in a week where you're sensitive. So it's good to just sort of step away and breathe. Right. It was quite a bumpy. It was a bumpy night. It was, it was, it was indeed. Uh, I love that movie when I was a kid. Uh, it was a treat for the eyes. And honestly, Diane, it's still good. I watched it over the weekend and, uh, you know when you're, you know when you're streaming, it. Uh, uh oh, my husband is, <laughs> my husband he he could be watching, which is why let's see. Oh okay. Okay, I think he's thinking now. All right, well I heard it. I I love that you can make a sound. Um let you know when someone's calling a different sound. So you don't even need to look, you go, Oh, that's my husband or that's my, my, um, a family member or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, he writes, um, from the damn, that's interesting community on Reddit, the skull of a colossal 150 million 150, let's see, colossal year old sea monster, Plesiosaur, was found at and extracted from the cliffs of the Jurassic Coast in Dorset, UK. Ooh. Now, I promised I'd talk about Godzilla. That's my husband giving me a gentle nudge that I should talk about Godzilla. So, um, Godzilla minus one is a film that my husband and I have been um, counting down by the, uh, let me go to your next thing, Diane. I know the Cyclops would come alive at night. <laughs> we'll leave that on. It's perfect. Um, Godzilla is, is a series of films that we love, good and bad. Whether the lip sync is on or off, uh, we don't care. We love the Godzilla movies. From the time we saw Godzilla with uh, Raymond Burr, to the time we got to see Gojira, which is Godzilla in its natural Japanese form. And now we have a collection of them in our DVD shelf. We were excited to hear that Japan had created a new one, Godzilla Minus One. And if you haven't heard the rumble, 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 rumble about this film, which we have not yet seen because my husband wants to coordinate it with our son, and uh, we won't go into that. That would be a digression, which I won't do now. I'll keep on Godzilla for you. Uh, but anyway, it is a movie that didn't spend a lot of money to make and is grossing like crazy. An amazing film. Everybody seems to love it. Rotten Tomatoes. Wow! All of the people that do their reviews are this we're back. Godzilla is back. Oh my gosh. You got to go see this. Go, go, go see it. And they're trying not to put spoilers up, which I thank them for because I don't know anything about it other than it's wonderful. So we're working hard to see it on the big screen. Originally, they were going to give it a limited release, meaning only one week. And I could not squeeze it in because that was last week, my scary week. So I was going to have to say, well, I'd love to have seen it, but I'm going to have to wait till I can stream it. But it got extended. And so it got extended into this week, I believe. And so we're working very, very diligently to see if we can get the three of us together so we can go see this film. So uh, that will be part of my project work today. But uh, if you are a Godzilla fan and for some reason you haven't seen this yet, uh, do yourself a favor and uh, find a place. They say the big screen is really something to see. Godzilla is killing it. Can you believe it? There's a lot of movies out there that are dying on the vine. Millions and millions of dollars, billions and millions of dollars spent, and they're falling flat. Nobody is interested in them. They don't have good things to say about them. People are like, meh, not worth it, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I can't name any because I haven't seen many. Now is the time for me to see them. We get screeners, meaning sometimes a DVD is sent to us for voting 
because we are part of uh, unions that vote. I'm SAG and my husband is an art director. And um, so we get those or we'll get a code in which to stream them on our various uh, devices, you know, yeah, our various uh, phone, iPad, computer, whatever, etc., so that we can watch them. And uh, so far, the stuff we've watched has been meh, real meh. One of the ones that just broke my heart we watched over the weekend is the new Willy Wonka, a very pretty film to watch but that's about all you're going to get. Um, and it's too bad because it's got great actors in it. They're just not doing the best job they can. And uh, I don't know why the script is not great. There's just, it's just not hitting it. It just, but it's gorgeous to look at. The art in it is spectacular. And, um, but it doesn't carry the whole film. And there was a lot of money spent on it. And it just, uh, it just breaks your heart to see I, it, 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 we streamed it, so we did not go in the theater to see it, and it might not have helped to stream it after the um, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory with Gene Wilder, because that one is so wonderful. That one is so cool. Uh, there's some things in it, as my husband, as an editor and a filmmaker, thinks they could have done better. Their budget was limited, but the key was their lead actor, Gene Wilder, when you look at Gene Wilder, if you haven't seen this movie in a while, I encourage you to see it uh, because he can look insane, endearing, angry, odd, off, just and all in his face and his eyes. And it's so much fun to hear the dialogue come out of his mouth. And just he is my favorite Willy Wonka, obviously. So He's so awesome. I think Charlie is lovely and Grandpa Joe is excellent. Um, I love the casting of the characters. I love the characters. But Willy Wonka is the one. Gene Wilder just really brings it. And I think you need that kind of mad inventor feel to Willy Wonka. You don't want him to be slightly insane, bad insane. You want him to be a little creative insane a little off, a little crazy, and yet warm and endearing and kind and mad. I mean, it's all of the elements. It's all of the emotions that is, as artists we go through, okay? Sometimes we're nuts. Sometimes we're soft and kind. Sometimes we're pensive and not listening. Sometimes we're off in another world. Sometimes we're um, goofy and silly. I mean, seriously. Watch Gene Wilder in this version of this um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It's an older version. It's a beautiful version. And you're going to be glad you did. You will find that a lot of the set pieces and things, there's a bit too much light on the set. But Lindsay says, my husband says this is because of the budget. It allows you to shoot. Uh, in a master shot, meeting everybody together and keep everybody in focus when there's lots of light on the set. Uh, it was also art directed uh, by Harper Goff. So if you're a Disney fan, ding, 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 there it is, Disney, Disney attachment, um, <laughs> that you can watch it and see what Harper Goff did. And if you watch the behind the scenes, you can catch a glimpse of Harper Goff working on the set with Roald Dahl. So it's so cool and so great. But don't watch the new one after that one because you could have the same feeling I do, which was eh, the art is beautiful, but meh. And that's too bad. That's I was really looking forward to that one. Forgive me. I still have my phone um, because, as I mentioned, I'm taking care of a couple households. And my mom is uh, not her household, but my mom. I've got some... Uh, adult in the room stuff I have to do for my mom today. So I've got it going. And then I've got some adult in the room stuff to do for my family. Yeah, it's just, it's there, which is why it's there. Okay. Hello, Ryan. Some of my favorite movies, uh, as I have spoken about. Exactly. Well, that's what I'm saying. Now is the time to check those out. As I mentioned before, I had not seen Home Alone in a while. I watched it, heard about McCau M Macaulay, 
and just wanted to send him good wishes because um, he's no longer that sweet little kid. He's grown up and dealing with adult stuff like we all are. Greg Greason, hello and congratulations. And you need to get over to the tribe and talk to the tribe as well, buddy. But it's good to have you here. And congratulations for all your successes that I have been reading about. Yay. Always good to, to see someone be doing well. So keep it up. And I will read what you wrote me a little more detail. Last week, I didn't really del dive into any of that because my weeks were, my week was crazy. Um, Stop motion is one of my favorite mediums. Yes, yes, Egan, and uh, it's magical, isn't it? It's magical. I I just can't wait to play in those swim in those waters. I really can't wait. Um, Diane, your dad was just letting you know that he's okay. I'm sure he got a kick out of the president, vice president, showing up at the cemetery. We did. Uh, glad we went early. And uh, glad we got things done. And you could just see our cemetery official at the National Cemetery, the veteran, just breathe a sigh of relief because it was so short and simple. My sister and I said, dad would have loved that. You know, we, we both just together almost at the same time as we were walking out of the chapel. Dad would have loved that, you know? So it it, it was great. It was great. Um, ah, see? So we've got someone. Yeah. And this is what I'm. Oh, I can't wait, Egan. I cannot wait. Um, I This week, we're going to go see it. My husband is working with his son to coordinate so I, we can finally see it. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we can see it on the big screen. We're really eager to get out to the theater and see this one. I know that a lot of people are saying you've got to go to the movie theater to see a movie. But with the ability to stream, you don't feel, do you, that all movies are created equal? Sometimes you go, there's no reason I need to see that movie on the big screen. You know, it's like, no, I don't see it. And it might be, it could be any movie. All right. I'm not saying that there is a type of movie that doesn't do that. But to you, you might say, you know, I'm not into this movie enough to spend two hours and seeing it. You know, like Willy Wonka, I would have loved to see on the big screen, but I would have been really angry if I'd have seen it on the big screen. It would have been lovely to see the art. But oof, I would have felt tortured. And so I'm glad I was able to stream it and then able to put something fun on right after because it broke my heart. It just wasn't a movie I liked. And if you fell in love with the new Willy Wonka, I commend you and I'm glad you did because for me, it fell flat. So, um, ouch. And don't listen to me. Um, go see it. The art will carry you. But um, I had to stream and I'm glad I did. Loving is the movie about that. Yes, loving. And if you see the movie, it's dull as dirt. If you read the book, it's they're the same, but the book is more interesting. Why? Because your mind is in there, right? So I had read the book and then I saw the movie and couldn't believe how much like the book, the movie was. It should have been a documentary. It would have had a whole different attitude in the person viewing. But as a movie, you wanted some, some you know, you wanted some movie stuff. And that's why movies have the permission to do that however they want, move things around, whatever. Because the idea is to get you involved. And then once you're involved, if you question some of the things that they talked about, then go read a book. That's the cool thing. Movies say, go read the book, you know, and that's the cool thing about it. My position, of course, always my position, guys, not telling you what to do just making the suggestion that this is what movies are. So don't get yourself all upset because that's not the way it happened. It's a movie, meaning you can make a movie the way you see it. And then if you want to see exactly how it happened, watch a documentary or read the book. Yep, that's it. Michelle says, hello, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Be the light in someone else's life. Indeed. Be that light. And... Uh, spread a little joy around, whatever that means, whatever that means, especially if you're feeling a little melancholy, go out and be someplace, you know, volunteer. I know that, uh, Bob Burdine and his wife, you know, they suggested when you're feeling bad, go volunteer and bring some joy into someone else's life by, I don't know, serving a meal or, 
you know, offering your services at a hospital or something like that, you know, just um, carol, do Christmas caroling with your friends. Even if your, your voice is not perfect, you know, um, I used to stand next to a friend of mine who was tone deaf and sang because uh, a lot of people who are not tone deaf didn't want to stand next to them because they would get off. They couldn't stay on book, but I never had that problem. And if I did, I just mouthed the words, you know, but it was so great to see how happy he was that he was included in caroling because so many made caroling more about more than just people getting together and sharing love. And you can easily grab a few friends together, pick up a few Christmas carols, uh, Hanukkah songs, and contact your closest uh, uh, convalescent hospital and do it there. So it's a way to lift your spirits too, is what I'm saying. Volunteering can do that. So do that for yourself as well. She's right. She's absolutely right. Uh, see Judy preach. It was on the Muppet Christmas Carol. She was on Jerry Anderson call. Tara Hawks, 1983. Wow, that's a math mouthful, Michael, but okay, great. I'll look for it. Yes, we're going to leave you up for a little bit so people can read that just for a minute. But yeah, Muppet Christmas Carol, of course, is um, the one that everybody says you should watch. And I don't disagree. It's a fun, um, it's a fun one. Uh, how am I today, Mike? Better than last week. Thank you for asking, which is why I didn't broadcast last week because I knew it was going to be a challenge, but I'm better now. So how are you? Are you ready for the holidays? Michael says it again. Uh, see Judy preach. It was on the Muppet Christmas Carol. She was on Jerry Anderson's show TV called Tara Hawks. There you go. Uh, he may have had a few extra characters in the first part, so he just wanted to say it again so that you can look at it. And I'm going to leave it up again because now that might be easier. So whether you're baking cookies, getting together with family, broadcasting as I am today, or doing something nice for someone else, do something nice for someone else. It's going to make you feel a whole lot better. Volunteer if you're feeling melancholy. Call a friend or get together with people to uh, tip a glass, alcoholic or non, doesn't matter, and just enjoy each other. I think that is the greatest gift you can give and get. And with that, I'm going to sign off. Hugs and loves to you all. I hope you enjoyed today. I did. Thank you for joining me. And we'll see you Friday, okay? Happy holidays. Friday is what date? Oh, my goodness, the 15th. Ah, it's coming so fast. All right, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Love you all. Hugs and kisses. Be well. And we'll talk.